Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Physics 30, Electromagnetic Radiation Lesson 4, Refraction. Now, today, a few things we have to talk about. First, describe quantitatively the phenomena of reflection and refraction, including total internal reflection. Second, describe qualitatively and quantitatively how refraction supports the wave model of EMR using n2 over n1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 and n2 over n1 equals v1 over v2 equals theta1 over theta2. That's Schnell's law. We will deal with that. Relax. Third, predict the conditions required for total internal reflection to occur. And fourth, derive the mathematical representation of the law of refraction from experimental data. So a lot to do to here today. So let's get going. So refraction is similar to reflection, except when a ray refracts, only part of the ray bounces off the incident surface. The other part travels into the surface. When the wave, wave sorry, when the ray travels into the surface, it does so at a different angle than which it was incident. The light will also change its speed depending on the refractive index of the medium. Now that's kind of, you know, let me show you. You all remember this from yesterday. The incident ray coming in, angle of incidence, the reflected ray, angle of reflection, these two are equal. Today we're talking about refraction, how the light ray goes into a different surface, or a different material, I should say, and refracts. And here we have angle of refraction. Notice capital R for refraction. Now, it's kind of hard for me to describe this. Well, it's, it's a lot easier for you guys to be here and play with the laser pointers. During the lesson today, I'll bring out the camera and laser pointer and show you what's going on. Now, for the moment, we're just dealing with the theory part here. So this refraction, the light ray goes in, and instead of bouncing off, some of it bounces off. Sorry, let me phrase that. You can't see what I'm gesturing here. The light ray comes in, and some of it reflects off, but some of it goes into the material, refracts. But when it goes in, it changes direction. That's what you notice. Now, definitions refracted ray, ray that changes speed and direction that goes from one medium, one material to another. And I really, really, really have to stress this. It, refraction is change of speed. Usually it changes direction, but it always changes speed. And that's the definition they're looking for, speed. Now, angle of refraction, angle between the refracted ray and the normal line. Now, of course, being physics, we talk about this mathematically, and we've developed the index of refraction, the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum, C to the speed of light in another material. Now, we'll, of course, talk more about that, but... So different mediums, or the material light travels through, will allow light to travel through them at different speeds. The slowing of light effect was first observed by Fizzo, uh, the speed of light guy, six of diamonds, an experiment used to measure the speed of light through water. Okay? This gets wonderfully complicated, but to determine the index of refraction of material, the following formula is used. Right from your formula sheet, n equals c over v. n is the index of refraction, c is the speed of light in a vacuum, and v is the speed of light in a medium. Now, why do we use this? Well, it allows us to uh, compare materials. And, oh, and uh, gentlemen, have you ever give your lady a diamond? Don't try the cubic zirconium crap, because that is a different index of refraction, and that's noticeable. Actually, it's noticeable, and it glitters differently. Uh, you will find that out the hard way if you try cheaping out. Anyway, now, could the index of refraction for medium be a negative number? Well, I'm sorry, color code. How the hell can we get a negative number? It's got to be positive. I can't have speed of light as a negative number. Now, could it be less than one? Well, the only way this could be less than one is, oh, just think about that. Then velocity would be bigger than the speed of light, which is impossible. 
n is less than 1, then v over s then velocity is greater than the speed of light, which is impossible. Okay. Okay, so n is a number greater than 1 tells us how fast light is going in a different uh, in a different materials. Now, a list of indexes is given on page 667 of your textbook. Now, a few things to note here. Notice that, that the indexes for a vacuum and for air are different, but the difference is negligible. For this reason, unless you're told otherwise, you may set the index refracts for air equal to 1 for most calculations. Now, I also put up the extra data table. If you go to the second part of that, indices of refraction. Um, these should be the same as in your textbook. I just have this is handier. The only problem with this is, of course, these are measurements and like corn oil. How pure is the corn oil? What type of corn did you use? So it could be a smidge different. Second decimal place. Don't care. So n for air is 1. Now, also note the indexes are for specific wavelength of light, in this case, yellow light. However, the difference between different wavelengths is relatively small, so this variation is usually ignored in practical problems, or the light is said to be monochromatic. You'll see that word a lot, monochromatic light, meaning it, meaning it is made up of only one color and wavelength, like a laser. Now, for the moment, we ignore this, but, or sorry, we ignore the fact that the index refraction does depend on the wavelength of light. We don't care about that now, but later it becomes important. Sorry. However, it is important to recall that different wavelengths of light refract differently when considering breaking light into different wavelengths in a prism. Sorry. A prism, this works because the wave, different wavelengths of light refract slightly differently, at a slightly different angle. We don't care about that right now. It does become important later. Anyway, so we always, in these questions, talk about monochromatic light, one wavelength. Okay? Now, Newton was the first to explain that white light, a combination of all the colors and the representative wavelengths, could be broken through dispersion using a prism put back together through recomposition by either focusing the individual colors through a lens or spinning a colored disk. So it was Newton who used a prism to come up the different colors of light, and he made up indigo violet instead of purple. Now, in class, I give you a prism, and you make a uh, rainbow. And then I challenge you by giving you two prisms and trying to take one person make a rainbow, the other person take the rainbow back and make it white light. Difficult, but possible. And just pretend you're playing with it, or if you're stuck at home, look at YouTube. You can see videos on this. Now, here we're getting into calculating stuff. If light passes from a medium or material of lower refractive index to a medium of higher index refractive index, it bends towards the normal line. So let's use an example here. Water. And say corn oil. Very normal. And let's choose a nice red light. No, I just use red um, blue. Now what's going to happen here? The light ray comes in. That's supposed to be a straight line. My apologies. There we go. Angle of incidence. Now, this bends in. Angle of refraction. Now how do I know that? Well, for water, N is 1.00, and corn oil, as we just found out here, is 1.47. So, the 1.47 means this is slower, and light will be faster. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Not water. God help me. Make it air. Air is an index of 1.00. All right, I'm going to pause the recording and have some coffee because that's an embarrassing stupid mistake to make. Anyway, it slows down, it bends in. 
Now, once we do some math, you realize how this works. Conceptually, I always think of this as you're going from pavement faster to sand on the beach slower. Well, you're not on the beach. All right, gravel. You got to slow down. And what happens when you go at an angle? One of the tires digs into the corn and digs into the corn. God help me. Digs into the gravel. What happens? It spins and slows down. So the whole car twists over. Now you may not notice that much with a car, but if you, uh, but you probably would. Not that I'm encouraging you to go out and drive fast from pavement to gravel at an angle. But if you think about that with the front wheel drive, the first tire comes off, hits the gravel, slows down, the whole car twists in. All right. Now, if light passes from a medium higher refractive index to a medium of lower refractive index, that is slower to higher to faster, So, let's do this corn oil thing again. All you guys driving, you know what happens? You're driving in driving on ice and all of a sudden one tire it's not on the ice anymore it's on this bare pavement it grips and what happens it takes the car actually I'm sorry you guys have these nice modern cars with electronics and stuff and the anti slip lock brake thing that goes thunka 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 I'm thinking my dad my dad's good old 78 V8 Pontiac god that was a tank eight miles to the gallon Top ended at 105 miles. Never mind. Anyway, when you when that sucker didn't have this um, anti-slip stuff, and when the, that first tire hit the pavement, slid off the ice onto the pavement, we went wow, and we felt that. So here, angle of incidence is much less than the angle of refraction. That one tire hit the pavement, and boom, the whole car went sideways. God, I missed that car. Eight miles to the gallon. Anyway, so light pass, so it goes from slower to faster, and it bends out. They said, think about this the car going from beach to the pavement, or in this instance, ice to pavement. One tire gets on there, the whole car goes sideways. Or it gets pulled anyway that's the way i think of it and when you're asking ask a question like this i have to stop and think because yeah conceptually it's not bad but i have to think about it for a minute okay so remember this all right now light bends either towards or away from the normal lines as it enters a different medium okay now that's usually true except what happens it goes straight in but that's uh, something I'll show you in class or as a demonstration in video. Now, the amount of the light bends is depends on the medium the light is passing from and into. It was du Dutch mathematician Wilbert Schnell, Queen of Clubs, determined a relationship between the incident angle, refracted angle, and indexes of refraction for, of a ray of light. Now, Schnell developed this law: n2 over n1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. I will, in a separate video, derive this for you because the government says I have to. Anyway, right on your formula sheet, you have to remember what it is. Theta 1 is angle of incidence, theta 2 is angle of refraction, n1 is index of refraction of the light of the first medium, n2 is index of refraction of the second medium. So, go back to our corn oil. Sorry. I just did this. this again and so it is 1.47 come on keep going you can do it so if 
I'm going from air to corn oil, like that. This is N1, angle of incidence will be theta 1, uh, refraction, sorry, angle of refraction will be theta 2, okay? So you put the numbers in there, and normally, it's like any physics question, I give you three of them, you've got to figure out the fourth one. Surprise! Now, I want to note one thing here. What happens to the light rays going straight in? Well, what's the angle uh, incidence is zero. What's sine of zero? Zero. And you can't use Schnell's law of refraction for this. Okay? And that's a favorite trick question if the angle is zero, angle of incidence is zero. And that's why refraction talks about speed rather than angle because it will slow down, the light will slow down regardless of the angle, but sometimes if it goes straight in, the angle doesn't change. Now give me a minute, I'll do some example questions. But first, when a wave of light is incident on a more dense medium, higher index of refraction, the wave slows down. Now according to the universal wave equation, velocity is frequency times wavelength, this must mean either the frequency or the wavelength must also change. If the velocity goes down, then frequency times wavelength goes down. What changes, the frequency or the wavelength? Well, experiment shows that the frequency of the light, the number crest the wave passing a given point per second, does not change. If it has a frequency of 100 hertz, it stays a frequency of 100 hertz. That's 100 waves per second. This must mean that the, the wavelength, distance between crests, does change. Now, something that will become important later on, note that if we are using the universal wave equation, the concepts of wavelength and frequency to successfully describe light, light must behave like a wave. So light is a wave. Just like I've been talking about in class. Now, as I said, something we're going to talk about more later, but I want you to make a note of that. We will be coming back to it. All right. Now, as I said in a separate video, I'm going to derive Schnell's law, and we're going to show you the two parts. N2 over N1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. Now, if you look at your formula sheet, you'll see this second set. Uh, come on, let's go. Where are those equations? Here we go. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. Here's the two parts. Now, I want to warn you, on the old diploma exam, on the old, uh, sorry, pre-night, uh, two, three years ago, it changes. It used to be V1 over V2 equals lambda 1 over lambda 2. If you've got that version of the formula sheet, get the new one. I, I'll, I'll email, sorry. Let me know, and I'll email to you. I should remember to put this in the uh, notes or give you a copy of this. It doesn't matter. It's just this is the older version. They decided to split it up into two separate equations to make it conceptually easier for you guys. So if you see some old videos, I might use this whole thing, or some people on Khan Academy or YouTube will use this version of it. Same idea, just written slightly differently to confuse you. The government actually changed it so there's two separate formulas, so it's in theory simpler. I'm trying to make it, trying to be nice for you. Anyway, no comment. Actually, no. It was a nice idea. I don't know. Anyway, now remember, lambda one is wavelength in the first medium. Lambda two is wavelength in the second medium. V one is velocity in the first medium. V two is velocity in the second medium. Now, what have we got? Equations. What are we going to do? Practice. Woohoo! So here's a typical question for you guys. A beam of green light travels through a translucent oil with unknown index of refraction. The light strikes a cube of plastic em emerged, emerged in the oil, submerged. Submerged in the oil at an angle of 135 to the horizontal. The light bends to an angle of 21 degrees to the horizontal in the plastic. Determine the ratio of the index of refraction of the plastic compared to the oil. Okay. 
right, now, let me see here. So it goes, okay, a beam of green light travels through a translucent oil, then on, and it light strikes a cube of plastic merged in the oil at an angle of 135 to the horizontal. The light bends to an angle of 21 in the horizontal plus. All right, now, let me, sorry, I'm not the best drawing, but it goes like that. Okay. Now, notice I gave you the picture, and there's several things wrong with this. Typical confusion points, or typical things out to get you. Now, this time I've given you a drawing, which is not very good, but you have to figure out, compare the index of refraction of the plastic compared to that of the oil. What the hell are they smoking? Well, first things first, N2 over N1 equals sine theta, and I've got to double check, so I always forget sine theta 1 or sine theta 2. So determine the ratio of the index of refraction, the plastic compared to that of the oil. Now this one's sneaky. You're not solving for N2, you're not solving for N1, you're solving for N2 divided by N1. Notice the wording. So that means you need theta 1 and theta 2. And the other trick here is my drawing sucks because you're supposed to measure everything from the normal. That's 90 degrees. So that's your angle of incidence. And this is your angle of refraction, or theta 2 and theta 1. So this is a definition question, and you have to fix the drawing because they're out to confuse you. So, what is the angle of incidence? Well, if it's 90 degrees and that's 135, that angle of incidence is 45 degrees. Now, what is the angle of refraction? Well, the whole thing is 90. If this is 21, that is 90, 70, 69 degrees. Okay, so we're going, and this is the first one, sine of 45 degrees divided by sine of 69 degrees. So what's the index of refraction? Mm, okay, I don't know. Grab Mr. Calculator. Oh, I put mine down, poopy. What do you get? Oh, and make certain you're in degree mode, not rating, because then you get a weird answer. Well, sine ratio. Zero point seven five seven. Zero point seven six. Since we normally go to two decimal places with these questions, rounding off to point seven six. Now, what is that telling you? Well, it's telling me that uh, the speed of light in the second substance is slower than the speed of light in the first. It's about seventy six percent of the speed. So it's slowing down a lot more in the plastic. Oh, hang on. Back here, this is. Sorry, speeding up in the plastic. N never mind. Okay. Speed of light in the oil is about 76% of the speed of light in the plastic. All right, let's try another one, then I'm not going to screw up in front of you. Monochromatic light if a frequency f travels from a vacuum into a block of crown glass, n equals 1.52. Will the frequency of the light increase or decrease in the glass and by how much? Okay. So, we're all going, well, how, how does the frequency change? It doesn't. It's a trick question. All right. Now the next part, will the speed of light increase or decrease increase or decrease in the block and by how much? Well, N2 over N1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. That's one version of the equation. The other one is N2 over N1 equals V1 over V2, which is lambda 1 over lambda 2. 
and speed of light. So that's the part of the equation we need. Okay, so I gotta draw a picture. N is 1.52. Here's the piece of glass. Here's the air. That's the normal. Now, I don't know the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction here. I don't need it. What I need to know is the light comes in. Now, this is going from a faster to slower. So it's going to bend in like that. Now, I want you guys to draw this picture, okay, even though you don't need it. Now, what is N2? Well, actually, you do need it to tell which one's N1 and N2. N1 is coming from going into. So N2. Now, N2 is 1.52, and 1 is 1.00. Now, V1 is speed of light in air, which is what? 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Actually, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right? That is... C divided by V, that is C divided by V. So, solving for V, we want to know in the block. So, solving for velocity is C divided by 1.52, which is 0.658C. Now, you notice I'm doing it like this. It's a ratio of the speed of light. Notice it's less than the speed of light, slowing down. Now, depending on your physics teacher or physics professor, they will want the velocity like this as a fraction of the speed of light. Now, you can also multiply that out. 1.97 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You... Um, usually, I want the number 1.97 times 10 to the 8 meters a second. I will ask the odd question where I talk about ratio of the speed of light or a multiple choice question. I put, leave the answers 0.658C. Now, yeah, it's something you're supposed to be able to do, and a lot of physics professors prefer that leaving it as a fraction of C. All right, so far so good ish. Now, here's one of my favorites. Mr. Sutton wraps some leftover hot pizza in a pizza plastic wrap. When the pizza cools, a thin layer of water collects beneath the surface of the plastic. Right? So, drawing the picture. Air on top, plastic, water, and more air down below. And below this is the pizza. But I'm just looking at the plastic and the water right now. So the question, if a beam of light traveling through air is incident on the plastic at an angle of 45 degrees, what angle will the light exit the plastic water layer? and strike the pizza. So, here we've got to do some calculations. All right, now. So we've got angles and incidence of refraction. So it's N2 over N1 equals sine theta 1 to sine theta 2. So this is going from air to plastic. It's going to slow down, which means it's going to bend in. So, what am I looking for here? Well, what's the angle it exits? So, the light bends in, goes down here. Now, plastic, it's going to speed up when it hits the water, which means it's going to bend out. And then it's going to keep on going, and it's going to hit the air, and it's going to bend out even more. So, what's my angle here? Should be 45 degrees, but let's prove it. Anyway, so first things first. 
what is my angle of refraction here? That's theta 2 in this calculation. So this is n2 is 1.56, n1 is 1.00, equals sine of 45 over sine of theta 2. Now, okay, plugging the numbers in, I'm getting theta 2 is 27 degrees. Check my math for me, please. I realize here I haven't got room to write out all my steps. So if this is 27 degrees, this is 27 degrees, sorry, color coding it, it would be 27 degrees here is theta 1. What is theta 2 now? Not my best drawing, but it will speed up and bend out a little bit. A new theta 2. So this is N2 is water. N1 is plastic, so 1.33 or 1.56 equals sine of 27 degrees over sine of theta. And I'm getting 32.2 degrees. Check my math for me. I have to rewrite this to give you guys more space. Now, as I said, color coding this. So this is 32.2 degrees here. That's my new theta 1. What's my new theta 2 here when it refracts? I'm betting it's 45 degrees because this will become N1. This becomes N2. Excuse me. So 1.33 over 1.00 sine, excuse me, theta 1 is 32.2 over sine of theta. Now, I'm going to double check that. Sine of 32.2 is 0.5328 divided by 1.33 is inverse sine of That's not right. N2 over N1 Oh, crap. 1.00 N2. God help me. This N2. Oh, 1.33. Never mind. So, sine 32.2 is 0.5328 times 1.33. Sine inverse answer. 45.1. Knew it was 45 because that was the angle we went in at. Okay, now skip steps there, but you guys have shown me you're smart. Should be able to handle the math. And we'll leave it at that for the moment. Now, the order of the plastic and the water in the diagram is switched. Well, the angle. Will the angle that the light leaves the layers change? No. You want to go back and do the math and prove it? It really doesn't matter because it starts in air and it ends in air. Now, I will do a couple more of those calculations in total internal reflection, so give me a minute. Now, total internal reflection. As light moves from a more dense medium to a less dense medium, such as moving from water to air, the light is bent away from the normal. This means that the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. This can lead to a phenomenon called total internal reflection. Now, consider three blocks of glass, each having n equals 1.325. The light is directed through them at the following incident angles to air. We can calculate the, we can determine the angle of refraction for each block. So, here we have a block of glass. Light is going through it, and it's hitting air on the outside. I want to know 
angle of refraction. Now, N2 over N1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. Now, let's see if I can screw this up. N2 is air, so that is 1.00. N1 is the glass, refracts 1.325. Now it's coming in at 48 degrees. What is it refracting at? Now, as I said, the last of them, last couple of examples, I've been doing them kind of quick. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to slow down and show you this one. This one, I would suggest just cross multiplying. 1 times sine of theta 2 sine of theta 2, 1.325 times sine of 48 degrees. Zero point nine eight four seven, which gives me theta angle theta is 79.9 80 degrees. So my angle of refraction is like 80 degrees. Okay. So note here the light will be refract the light will be refracted out of the block. Now note I'm changing the angle to 49 degrees. Determine the angle of refraction. Zero zero one point three two five. Yes, still same block three two five. Cross multiply nine theta two is one point three two five forty nine degrees. Theta equals 89.7. So basically it comes off 89.7 degrees, roughly 90 degrees. Now, I'm just going to call that 90. Keep the math simple. Note, in this block, the light is refracted at a 90 degree angle. All right. Now, this means the light will not leave the block when the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. We say the incident light has reached a critical angle. So it's not coming out. It's hitting here and going straight out like that, or straight across. It's not coming out. Now, as I said, I'll do this in a video. Sep oh, I'll show you in class today what I'm talking about here. But this is total internal reflect reflection. The light doesn't come out. This is how fiber optic cable works. You send a laser light down a fiber optic cable. So you come, you get fast internet. The light bounces inside the glass. It doesn't leave. Really quite neat. Now, let's just try 50 degrees. N2 over N1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. 1.325 over... Oh, sorry, but air is one, never mind. This is why you should really draw a picture. <sighs> theta is point three two five. 50 1.01 .01. cannot find that inverse 
line inverse angle is a domain error. Maximum sign value can be as 1.00. No answer. So here it's not mathematically possible to determine the angle of refraction. This is because there's no refracted light. All of the light is reflected back into the plastic. This is an example of total internal reflection. Okay. Now, this also leads to our definition of critical angle, the maximum angle of incidence that produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees from the normal. They love this question. Well, I love this question. You see it on the diploma occasionally. A beam of monochromatic light is directed from a block of plastic n equals 1.45 into air. Determine the critical angle for total internal reflection. All right. So we have plastic. Air. N is plus 1.45. So the light goes at an angle like this. Now, angle of incidence we're solving for. Now, determine the critical angle. Critical angle means total internal refraction. Angle of refraction is 90 degrees. Okay, remember that. So I'm giving you one of the angles. You just have to read the question carefully. So the equation. What do we know? We know the index of refraction of air, N2, 1.00. The plastic it came from is N1, 1.45. We don't know the angle of incidence, but we know the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. Now, what is sine of 90 degrees? Please tell me you know sine of 90 is 1. And the 90 is 1. So how do we find the angle? So we work backwards. And we get about 43 degrees. So if you go in at 43 degrees, we get total internal reflection. All right, another question for you guys to try. Determine the index of refraction of a substance that has a critical angle of 42 degrees when traveling into a vacuum. Now solve for N. Okay, now I'm gonna pause the recording. You guys, we'll set up the question, we'll come back and we'll look at it, okay? Welcome back. Now, I figured, set it up like this. My substance, I don't know my index refraction n, but I know a vacuum, n is 1, so there's my normal. And like going in at 42 degrees, exiting at 90. This is theta 1, theta 2. So setting up my equation. N2 is 1, N1 I don't know, that's what I'm trying to solve for. I know everything else. So I plug in my numbers, sine 42 divided by sine 90 is about 0.6691. And I got N is about 1.49. Now, that makes sense because it's going from a substance where it's going slower to a vacuum where it's going faster. And the N, the index of refraction, tells you how fast the light goes compared to the speed of light. So it's going to be bigger than one. That means slower. Okay? Now, is the math hard here? No. Now, one more question. The speed of light in a clear liquid is one-third one that of the speed of light. Determine the critical angle of the liquid. Oh, crap. No numbers. Can we handle this? Yes. 
here we have critical angle. So liquid. Now someone's going to point out, no, we should be going, this should be a horizontal line, not a vertical. I don't care because it's a model. Normal, oh, sorry. N is, we don't know, N is 1.00. Now I will say V equals C, V equals one third C. So we're going in at an angle here, angle of incidence. Angle of refraction is 90 degrees. This is theta 2. This is theta 1. Now, a couple different ways to solve this. Offhand, let me think. Oh, yeah. N2, N1. The critical angle equals sine theta 1 sine theta 2. Now I want you to point out n2 over n1 also equals v1 over v2. So it's probably easier to do it this way. So do we know sine theta 1? No. Do we know theta 2? Yes. Do we know v1? Yes. Do we know v2? Yes. So sine theta 1 over sine of 90 degrees. Velocity 1. Remember, this is the liquid. This is the first. So that's 1 third C. Notice I'm not calculating that. Divided by V2. Just C. Which is 1 third. The C's cancel out. And now you see, oh yeah. And sine of 90 degrees is 1. So this is sine of theta is 1 third. So what's theta? About 19.5 degrees. So the critical angle there is about 19.5 degrees. Okay. Is there another question about this? Uh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. You guys, see how that goes? Notice the math isn't hard, but they're throwing words at you to confuse you. Now here's another one that's a little confusing. On a particular day, the index refraction of a 5 megahertz radio signal in Earth's atmosphere is 1.81. The critical angle for this radio signal is. Now, huh? All right. On a particular day, the index refraction of a 5 megahertz radio signal in Earth's atmosphere is 1.81. So what they're talking about here is here I have the air. and you have a vacuum of space. What happens with the radio signal, it comes in and it refracts. It doesn't go out into space. It actually bounces off. Now, this is, how should I say, getting a little confused, oh sorry, it gets a little complicated because you will get some reflection also. The airspace boundary will act like a mirror but here we're getting ahead of ourselves. Save that for second year university physics. Anyway, five megahertz put into confuse you. Index of refraction is 1.81. Well, the vacuum, here they're saying N is 1.81 for the air. It's normally one, but anyway, just humor me. Once you've got that, N1, N2, and we're going, what's the critical angle? That's 90 degrees, angle of incidence. Okay. N2 over N1. As I said, the math isn't hard once you understand the question. And yes, I spent some time explaining air has an N value of one, but not in this instance. They're changing it just to confuse you. Okay. Okay, so zero over 1.8. 1 equals sine of theta 1 over sine 90 degrees. So sine of theta 1 is 1 divided by 1.81. 1. 
5525 beta 1 inverse sine 33.5 degrees okay Now, in class, I'll show a couple of examples of this and a answer your questions. But before then, I also want you guys to be familiar with a few applications, such as uh, total internal reflection, such as diamonds, page 672, fiber optic cables, page 673, and protoprism and binoculars, page 674. If you haven't got your textbook at home, email me. I'll scan the pictures in and pages in and send them to you. Now, take some time to read these sections and be ready for some problems based on these topics, okay? Good luck.